So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another class of PIB 247. In today's session, we'll be guys talking about the PIB news from 12th to 14th of May 2023. And I hope your preparations for the RBI Great B examinations are going well. And uh, yeah, padte raho aur abhi to hai time aap logo ke paas jitna bhi time hai, just give your best. And yes, in the last video there were uh, various comments regarding who is this man so guys this is me only right due to some due to certain reason i had to do this okay now but don't worry a dead my name though my name the old manisha will be back okay so let's talk about uh, the very first question from today's uh, session which scientific organization has successfully conducted india's first trial run of blood bag delivery by drones under its iDrone initiative in New Delhi. So have you heard about this initiative, iDrone initiative before this? Because I have heard about it. I have heard during the COVID-19 lockdowns when for the very first time this iDrone initiative was launched and for the very first time the trial run of vaccine delivery, the trial run of vaccine delivery was done. Okay, this is the trial run of blood bag delivery by drones. But at that time, trial run of vaccine delivery was done by drones under iDrone initiative. Right. So, se, ye us time se hai hamare desh mein chal hai, iDrone initiative. Right. So, ICMR guys has successfully conducted India's first trial run of blood bag delivery by drones under its iDrone initiative where in New Delhi. Right. So, who has conducted it? Which organization has conducted it? So, that's ICMR. This uh, trial was conducted by the collaborative efforts of these four institutions, which are of course, number one is ICMR, number two is Lady Harding Medical College, which is located in New Delhi, Government Institute of Medical Sciences of Greater Noida and JP Institute of IT of Noida, right? And in this trial run, 10 units of whole blood samples from these two hospitals, GIMS and LHMC, which are uh, government Institute of Medical Sciences and Lady Harding Medical College were carried. All right. Now talking about iDrone initiative or project. So iDrone has a full form as well. ICMR drone response and outreach for Northeast. So initially it was launched for Northeast, but of course it will be rolled out across the country. And it is a drone delivery system, which is focused on end to end ecosystem for drone based logistic transportation. So in this particular project, we are focusing on logistics transportation through drones, right? It will be used in difficult geographical terrains, including land, island, foothills and across the hills. Or of course, if uh, there is normal road, then there are cars or motorcycles that motorcycle se bhi jo logistic hai, wo transportation. Ho sakta hai. But drone, you know, can be a game changer in difficult geographical terrains like uh, foothills or hills or islands, ho right? Its trial run, as I already told you, was conducted during COVID-19 pandemic in October 2020 to assess the feasibility of using drone to deliver vaccines and medical supply. This trial run, this one, was conducted in Bishnupur district of Manipur and an island in Loktakle, right? And its pilot project is being rolled out, was rolled out, in fact, in Manipur, Nagaland and Andaman and Nicobar Islands, all right? So guys, that is all about this news. And now let's come back to the question. Which scientific organization has conducted it? So that's ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. For those who don't know the full form, it is Indian Council of Medical Research. Option A is the correct answer. Let's talk about question number two. What is the name of recently launched learning management information system by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare? Here system is missing. So in PDF system is PDF. For providing online training and medical education to all health professionals in the country. Right. So this is a learning MIS and the name is Saksham. It has been launched by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare headed by Mr. Mansuk Mandavia. Right. Now Saksham has a full form of course. Right. It stands for Stimulating Advanced Knowledge for Sustainable Health Management. Right. That is the full form of Saksham. And as the question says, it is a dedicated and unified platform for what? For providing online training and medical education to all the health professionals across the country, right? And it has been developed by National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, which is located in New Delhi. This information is very, very important. Which organization has developed it? So it has been developed by National Institute of Health and Family Welfare. 
it uh, currently it is hosting more than 200 public health and 100 clinical courses through online mode which can be accessed by all the health professionals and it will also help the professionals the health professionals to register themselves for these courses and they can also get the certification after getting trained and qualifying the required assessment criteria okay so that is all about this and this learning mis is known as what Saksham option c is the correct answer Question number three, how many water stressed districts have been focused under Jal Shakti Abhiyan Catch the Rain 2023? So this uh, Abhiyan, this Catch the Rain campaign, we have discussed it uh, before as well, but uh, so it is in news because why it is in news because Ministry of Jal Shakti has recently organized a workshop come orientation training program in New Delhi for central nodal officers and technical officers for effective implementation of this. Uh, Jal Shakti Abhiyan or you can say Catch the Rain campaign. Okay, now in meeting mein kya hua? that is not at all important for us. What, what is important for us is the uh, Jal Shakti Abhiyan Catch the Rain, uh, Rain campaign. Now this Catch the Rain campaign guys is all about water conservation. Right, it is all about what? It is all about water conservation. Okay, and it was launched for the very first time in the year 2019 and this edition is the fourth one. Okay. And for the year, this year, the theme is sourced sustainability for drinking water and the duration for this year's campaign is 4th March 2023 to 30th November 2023. Okay. The focus areas. Yes, this is important. The focus areas of Jal Shakti Abhiyan is uh, are water conservation and rainwater harvesting, renovation of traditional and other water bodies or tanks, reuse and recharge of bore well structures, watershed development and intensive afforestation right so these are the five intervention areas under jal shakti abhiyan now the focus the focus is on 150 water stressed district in the 2023 campaign those are these campaign mein kya hai 150 water stressed district ke upar focus hai which have been identified which have been identified based on the intersection of the history of uh, the transportation of drinking water through tankers. Okay, history is made that in which area, in which district, how many times water tanker is coming and which district uh, is over exploiting the groundwater sources, right? And that data has been collected from Central Groundwater Board. Okay, so that is all about this, guys. And uh, on how many districts this Jal Shakti Abhiyan 2023 is focused. So 150 is the correct answer option D. Let's talk about question number four. Till May 2023, 2,96,928 villages. And yes, you have to remember this number. This is very, very important number. Okay. Now you have to understand why this number is and why you have to remember it and why is it very important. So till May 2023, 296,928 villages, which is more than 50% villages have achieved the ODF plus status under phase two of such Bharat Mission Grameen. Which of the following are the top performing states in ODF plus villages in terms of percentage? Very, very important question, guys. So the government has announced that now over 50% villages are there in the country, which have achieved the ODF plus status under phase two of SBNG. Now, what do you mean by ODF plus status? ODF plus is the status. ODF plus villages are those which are ODF and they are maintaining their open defecation free status. They are maintaining, they are maintaining their ODF status along with solid or liquid waste management, right? Along with solid or liquid waste management. Okay. So such villages are known as what ODF plus, right? I hope this is clear. ODF plus means maintaining the ODF status plus solid or liquid waste management. Okay. And as on May, 2,96,928 villages have declared themselves as ODF plus villages. And out of these, out of these 2,96,928 villages, there are 56,285 villages which are, which are ODF plus model villages, right? A model villages mein kya hai? These are those which are maintaining ODF status and they are also working on solid and liquid waste management, both. Solid or liquid waste management dono pe kaam kar rahe and they are acting as uh, model villages for the other villages. Okay. 
Now talking about top performing states in ODF plus villages. So among big states, it is Telangana, which is at number one hundred percent. Uh, villages are ODF plus followed by Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh. Now talking about small states, so Goa is at number one followed by Sikkim. And top performing UTs are Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Dadar, Nagar, Haveli and Daman and Diu and Lakshadweep which all have 100% ODF plus model villages. In Tino uh, UTs may 100% ODF plus model villages pay out. Okay. So that is all guys about this and it, this is a very very important question. So which three Top performing states are these top performing states Telangana, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. Maharashtra, Bihar, ka kahi naam nahi usme. So one, two, and four is the correct answer. Yes, option C. One, two, and four. Question number five. What is the name of Green Port Guidelines 2023 recently released by Ministry of Port, Shipping, and Waterways to meet the larger vision of achieving zero carbon emission goal? Thoda sa aaj lamba hai session because there are various news. So thoda sa dhere bana ke rakhenge. Have some patience. ठीक है चुपचाप से बैठ के सुनते रहो. So what is the name of Green Port Guidelines 2023 recently released by the Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways? And these guidelines will meet the larger vision of achieving zero carbon uh, goal. ठीक है and this question number sixth is also based on this news only. So it is Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways uh, which has launched Harit Sagar. Harit Sagar, the Green Port Guidelines for uh, you know for greening all the ports of the nation. Thereby meeting the larger vision of achieving zero carbon emission goal, right? The overall objectives of this these guidelines are to minimize waste through reduce, reuse, repurpose, and recycle, so that we can attain zero waste discharge from port operations, and also to promote monitoring based on environment performance indicators. Okay. Now, they these guidelines envisage ecosystem dynamics in port development and maintaining coherence with working with nature working with nature concept theek hai hum nature ke sath kaam kar rahe hain nature ke khilaf kaam nahi kar rahe hain theek hai to these guidelines will be focused on these now these these guidelines also lay emphasis on use of clean or green energy wo to uske naam se hi clear hai harit sagar theek hai harit sagar which means green sagar theek hai and it also provides a framework for major ports for achieving targeted outcomes In terms of quantified reduction in carbon emission over defined timelines, so all the ports would have to reduce their carbon emissions in the given and defined timelines. Okay, and when this uh, uh, these guidelines were launched, so that was the ceremony, and during those ceremony, various ports were also conferred various awards. Okay, but not all awards are important. We are doing only four importance out of all, uh, which are I I believe are most important. So number one is best a uh, best absolute performance award was given to Deen Dayal Port of Kandla for handling highest cargo of one thirty seven point five six million metric ton, followed by not followed by award for achieving major milestone in turnaround time. It's JNPT Jawaharlal Nehru Port award for best incremental performance. It's Paradi Port for attaining the highest cargo growth rate of sixteen point five six percent as compared to the last year. And finally, award for the best port overall. Overall best port is Paradip Port. ठीक है जी overall best port is which port? Paradip Port. ठीक है. So that is all about this news. Uh, question number five. What is the name of the green port guidelines? So that's Harit Sagar. Option B. And question number six. Which port has been awarded the best port award for overall annual performance? Okay. So that's Paradip Port. Option D. Option D is the correct answer because for the overall performance, uh, the best port is Paradip Port. Okay, now let's talk about question number seven. Deep Ocean Mission is a high-level, multi-ministerial, multi-disciplinary program for better understanding of the deep sea, living and non-living resources of the Indian Ocean. It will aid in India's efforts to attain the blue economy status. It was launched in Dash with an estimated cost of Dash for a period of five years. Okay. So deep ocean mission, it is in news because again because of a meeting of uh, um, you know of uh, the council which has been constituted for guiding this mission. Okay, so that's why we are discussing it. So talking about this mission, so remember this mission, guys, it is it is actually a high level multi ministerial, multi disciplinary program under which we want to better understand the deep sea living and non living resources of the Indian Ocean. Okay. And it will definitely aid to the efforts of the country to attain the blue economy status. 
It was launched last to last year, 2021, with the total outlay, the total cost, the total estimated cost, in fact, 4047 crores for the period of five years with two phases. Phase one, uh, 2823.40 crores, which uh, which will be for the period of three years. Then after successful or after assessing the success of phase one, phase two will be launched with the total outlay of 1223.60 crores. Okay. Now there are six themes of this mission which you don't have to remember. These are given just for the you know understanding that what they are doing under this particular mission. Number one, development of technology for deep sea mining, uh, manned submersible and underwater robotics, development of ocean and climate change advisory services, technology innovations for exploration and conservation of deep sea biodiversity, deep ocean survey and exploration, energy and fresh water from the ocean, and advanced marine station. Uh, for ocean biology, ठीक है ये आपको याद यही नहीं करना है you don't have to remember it at all. Now there is a mission steering committee under this particular mission, uh, for which the meeting has uh, been uh, you know has taken place. That's why it is in news. So what is this mission steering committee under this mission? So it is the highest policy making body constituted under this mission, which provides broad policy direction to the mission, which provides which provides the direction for the governance for the deep ocean sector and it also advises the other committee in policy and implementation strategy so basically the overall guidelines the overall guidance to this mission is being provided by this mission steering committee which is chaired by the minister of state in earth sciences which is currently dr jitendra singh dr jitendra singh and it also consist it consists of union ministers of state of environment external affairs defense and finance in addition to vice chairperson of niti ayog theek hai ji so that is all guys about this mission uh so it was launched in 2021 with a total estimated cost of 4047 crores which means uh yeah option b is the correct answer option b let's talk about question number 8 which national initiative has been launched by ci csir nisc pr For communicating India's scientifically validated traditional knowledge to society, ठीक है? So this is Swastik. What is the name of the initiative, guys? Swastik, and it is in news because CSIR, National Science of uh, National Institute of Science Communication and Policy Research, has hosted the first meeting of Water Ecology and Environment Subcommittee, ठीक है? And it has been held as a part of national initiative for computing India's Scientifically validated traditional knowledge to society, which in short is what swastik. ठीक है ज्यादा डिटेल में इसके नहीं जाएंगे बस इतना सा ही पढ़ेंगे जितना अभी आपके सामने है स्वास्थिक स्टैंड फॉर साइंटिफिकली वैलिडेटेड सोसाइटल ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज दिस इनिशिएटिव हैज द ऑब्जेक्टिव टू कंजर्व द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ राइट ट्रेडिशन इन कंक्रेट साइंटिफिक टेम्पर अमंग द सिटीजन इन अ साइंटिफिक मैन and also to instill confidence in citizens regarding the scientific value of our traditional knowledge or practices jaise hum tika lagate hain to uski kya scientific value hai right to is tarike ki traditional knowledge ki yahan pe baat ho rahi hai aur usme kya scientific value hoti hai jaise aapki mother aapko kehti hongi ki whenever there is a solar eclipse or lunar eclipse to aapki mother aapko ye kehti hongi ki bhai naha lo right but aap mein se kai log abhi baagi ho chuke honge Uh, वो कहते होंगे क्यों ना लो सूर्य ग्रह नहीं तो लगा है वाई वुड आई गो टू टेक अ बात सूरज को uh, नहाना चाहिए बट उनके पीछे जो रीजन है या जो भी रीजन आपकी मदर को हो सकता है ना पता हो बट शी इज एब्सोल्युटली राइट और ये जो गैप आया है बिकॉज ऑफ कलोनलिज्म जो हमारे जो हमारा ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज था उसको बीच में आके कलोनलिज्म जो अंग्रेजों ने तोड़ा है उसकी वजह से जो नॉलेज ट्रांसफर थी वो नहीं हो पाई बस अदरवाइज आपकी मदर को पता जरूर होता है कि इसका रीजन क्या है तो इसलिए अगर कुछ ऐसा बोला जाता है तो कर लिया करो आपका क्या नुकसान है भाई ठीक है हाँ बिल्कुल ही अंधविश्वासी मत बनो अब आपसे कोई कह रहा है कि बिल्ली ने रास्ता काट दिया तो पेपर देने मत जाओ सो दिस इज समथिंग विच इज वेरी एक्सट्रीम ठीक है ऑल इसके पीछे भी कोई लॉजिक होगा या जो भी होगा लॉजिक तो नहीं होगा आई बिलीव ये तो एक मानने वाली बात है बट Try not to be too much extreme. थोड़ा सा मिडल पास देखो हमेशा कि सब खुश रहे आप भी खुश हो जाओ सामने वाला भी खुश हो जाए राइट सो लेट्स मूव अहेड विदाउट एनी फर्दर बकवास 
so implementing agency csir nisc pr and what happens under this scheme is simplified creative content on traditional knowledge is being disseminated through digital platforms in english hindi and various other regional languages theek hai so what is the name of this initiative so that's swastik option d is the correct answer and now let's talk about the questions in short but before that if you want to have the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description and if you want to ace the examination this year only we have launched a crash course to crack this examination with a personalized mentorship program mentorship sessions where i and anil sir are solving the doubts uh, uh, directly uh, by talking directly to the students theek hai and yeah इसमें मॉक टेस्ट वगैरह आपको सब कुछ मिलता है सो इफ यू वांट टू एनरोल इन इट यू कैन विजिट टू अनुजिंदल डॉट इन क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन टिल नाइन्थ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री हाउ मच वीट हैज बीन प्रोक्योर्ड हाउ मच वीट हैज बीन प्रोक्योर्ड थोड़ा गलत हो गया ये ड्यूरिंग ऑन गोइंग रबी मार्केट सीजन ऑफ ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर ठीक है कितना वीट प्रोक्योर किया जा चुका है uh, देखो जनरली गाइज मैं मंथली डेटा नहीं डालता आई नेवर पुट मंथली डेटा uh in the content in the video but uh, since the exam is very near so they can ask you the recent data right so that's why this question is here so 252 lakh metric ton option a is the correct answer which organization has announced the theme of its pavilion from school to startup igniting young minds to innovate at national technology week 2023 okay so the organization guys in question is niti aayog option c is the correct answer Question number eleven. Where has been the meetings of head of railways administration of SCO member Shanghai Corporation Organisation uh, states held under the chairpersonship of India under the presidency of India? This meeting of heads of railway administration of on SCO took place in New Delhi, the capital. Option A is the correct answer. Question number twelve. Where has been the national conference on land governance in North Eastern states recently held? So it was. Uh, Uh, you know, it was organized by Labashna, Lal Bahadur Shastri, National Academy of Administration, along with Government of Assam, Government of Assam in Guwahati. So, option B is the correct answer. All right. Okay, guys. So that's all for today. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section, and I will see you in the next session on Wednesday. Goodbye. Take care, and God bless.